Hey. Oh. <laughs> That's all I got, dude. Oh, that shit, dude. Just. <laughs> <laughs> Hey yo, what is up Thrill Seekers? Today I am here back at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas and I'm going to be doing a cool video today. I'm going to be showing you guys how to avoid the crowds as you're here at Fiesta, Texas. Um, I'm going to walk through, well I'm going to walk through one um, kind of way to do it um, and then I'm going to be showing you two others just depending on how your day goes. Um, you know, if you have a season pass or just a day ticket and kind of what your goals are for the day. If it's your first time riding roller coasters and you want to build up for, you know, you're coming here as another park that you want to go to and you're totally fine with coasters and you just want to hit all the big rides, right? Whatever you want to do, I'm going to have a little plan for you guys in place um, and show you guys the best tips and tricks on how to avoid crowds here at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. Yo. Oh my god, it's James, the YouTuber! <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, let's go through the three plans that you can take on your day at Fiesta, Texas. A lot of people will start with Goliath and Boomerang and then do a loop around the park. For me, I would say go straight to Iron Rattler. Sometimes Iron Rattler is closed in the morning because maintenance takes a little bit longer doing their safety checks. So you can go to Roadrunner and do that first um, if that's the case. Uh, either way, start with Iron Rattler and Roadrunner and then book it to the back of the park with Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, and then finish the loop with Goliath, which will have basically no line mid to late day. And then the second plan is going to be if you're a little bit nervous to ride roller coasters or you just want to build up in your day, then you can start with Roadrunner. Roadrunner is a very small ride. It's a great first roller coaster. From there, you can go right to Superman. Superman may look very intimidating, but whenever I take people who are scared of rides to the park, I always have them ride Superman as their first big roller coaster. It's really smooth. It's really graceful. It's not very intense or whippy. Um, um, and it's a really nice starter roller coaster to get you used to going upside down. There's no super big drops or anything like that. From there, you're going to basically finish out the loop of the park, just like you do in the first plan, ending with Goliath. This last plan is going to be super helpful if you can't get there right at opening or even before opening. You're going to, instead of going straight at Boomerang, you're going to take a left and go immediately to the back of the park with Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, and Joker. These are all going to still be kind of deserted because a lot of people are still at the front of the park. Um, and then you can circle back around to the front. You still probably will have to wait in some lines at Iron Rattler and Roadrunner, um, but it's the best way to avoid crowds if you get there a little bit later. And here we are, Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. First major tip of the day, get here early. It is currently about 10 a.m. Park doesn't actually open until 10.30, but they do let you into this opening plaza. Sometimes Goliath or Boomerang will open before the rest of the park. It may open at like 10.20 or something, if that's the case. Then go ahead, get a ride on Boomerang, get a ride on Goliath um, before the rest of the park opens and you won't really be missing anything. The crowds won't be able to get ahead of you because the rest of the park isn't even open yet. Also, don't be afraid to get a map. There's maps right here. And also, if you download the Six Flags app, there is an interactive map where you can basically search what you're looking for, things along those lines. The app overall is going to be super helpful. Um, it's going to allow for mobile food ordering, which I'll go through later. And it's also going to, of course, have the map and just some other features that you probably will want if, especially if it's your first and only visit here at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. So you're going to walk through the entrance, walk down that amazing entranceway here, then you're gonna make it to this plaza. This is where your, t I guess, your three options for going about your day are going to split off. I am going to go that way. 
This way is going to take you to Crack Axle Canyon, which is where Roadrunner and Iron Rattler is. Or you can go this way. This is where Poltergeist is gonna be. Also, it's going to get you to the back of the park faster, which is where Scream, things along those lines are. Another tip, if you are going to be coming to Six Flags Fiesta Texas or just Six Flags Parks in general multiple times in the year, then get a membership. They start at about $6 a month um, and then they go up to 17 depending on the four levels that you get. In my opinion, I would get the Diamond or Diamond Elite. That's going to be $12 a month and then 17 for the Diamond Elite. It's still not that much, especially if you're coming here like maybe once a month or even once every other month, that's like $30 a visit and not that bad. Plus you get 50% off everything. If you get Diamond Elite, 35 if you get Diamond. And with Diamond Elite, you get two skip the line passes every single time you come. With Diamond Pass, you get one skip the line pass every time you come. Like I said, guys, a lot of people start at Boomerang or Goliath. Also, if Boomerang has a super long line and you're not a coaster enthusiast who wants to get the credit, then just skip it. Boomerang is good, but it's not going to be one of your best rides here. And here you go. Here is the crowd at the rope drop to get into Crack Axle Canyon. There we go. Alrighty, let's do Roadrunner. I'm doing Roadrunner first because I feel like most people are going to want some sort of warm up ride real quick before they go for Iron Rattler. Now, if you don't need a warm up ride, ride Iron Rattler first, 100%. I'm gonna ride Roadrunner just cause I want to. So let's do it. And there are a lot of people here. All of them probably going to Iron Rattler first. But I'm going to Roadrunner. Now try to make your Roadrunner ride as quick as possible because Iron Rattler will get crowded really fast. Go! Oh my god, it's James the YouTuber! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm gonna sit back here. And that is why you get here first. <laughs> That's why you get here early and come straight here. Alrighty, from here, we're gonna go ride Iron Rattler. It does not seem like it has opened yet, which I told you guys it usually opens a little bit late. And here we go Iron Rattler. Told you guys, it always opens late. If you guys didn't know what Roadrunner is like, this is it. It's a really easy roller coaster. No loops, no, you know, inversions, not super aggressive. Uh, the height requirement is 42 inches. So if you go with some little ones, they still will be able to ride this ride. And that's why it's a great first roller coaster for people because it's very much not that intense, not that scary. It's a really chill ride overall. Now, if you find yourself in this situation where Iron Rattler is still closed when you get here, unless they are actively testing it as you walk up, I would suggest go check out another ride real quick and come back. A great option is Daredevil Dive, but Daredevil Dive will probably be closed for the season. Just kidding, it decided to open, um, but it is still a new ride, so it has a lot of issues that they still need to work out. So it may be closed for long periods of time throughout the day. Now this is a great time to talk about ride closures. There is a chance that when you go, two or three of like the 20 major rides may be closed for maintenance. Don't worry, Iron Rattler, stuff like that, they really try to keep open at all costs. But if you're excited for like Sky Screamer, um, then there's a very small chance that you may be out of luck whenever you go. If that's the case, just ride something similar like DC Supervillain Swings. Now, if you are in line and they announce we are experiencing a temporary delay, don't worry, there's nothing like wrong with the ride. There are hundreds and hundreds of sensors everywhere in the ride monitoring everything as small as even the gates. If someone pushes on the gates too hard, they can sense it's open and they'll think that someone is in the ride area and then it'll stop the ride. Uh, maintenance 
face just has to come up, reset their ride, and then we should be good for operation. This takes like 15 to 20 minutes. The reason why we say no estimated wait time is because there is a chance that it'll take longer and we don't want people to get mad if we tell them a time and then it takes longer. Um, but most of the time, it's pretty quick. Just an update, guys. The train is waiting for a part that will most likely be coming in around October. Gully washer got completely flooded um, and therefore it is waiting for some new parts that will most likely not be here until January. And as we walk down here to the back of the park, you'll see that there's really not many people that have gotten down here yet. Um, and that is why, you know, getting back here as quickly as possible is always a great move. Normally I would say ride Roadrunner, then Iron Rattler, then come down here. But since Iron Rattler is closed, Roadrunner, and then just skirt on down here. You can ride Superman, um, Batman if you want. It's not amazing, but it's cool. Um, and then Wonder Woman is one of the best rides in the park as well. So, yeah. Here we go, Superman Crypto Poster. Let's do it. Ta-da! No one here. And here we go. No one here. And you saw the crowds coming in earlier today. Like, like man, there are a lot of crowds that are here today. But still, no one here. Crazy. Let's get it! Let's go, baby! This way. There you go, Superman Krypton Coaster. Superman does definitely look scary. It looks intimidating. People are intimidated by it. I totally understand. It looks tall. There's loops and stuff like that. But it is one of the most graceful rides that you can ride. It is very calm. There's not any crazy moments where it's, you know, ejecting you up out of your seat or whipping you around. It's a very calm ride, a very chill ride. Um, and if you're scared, just remember, your chances of getting struck by lightning are 1 in 100,000. Your chances of dying on a roller coaster are 1 in 750 million. That is a crazy low chance. So, there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Trust me, these things are super safe. Alrighty guys, a good idea from here is if Joker does not have a long line, try to ride Joker. Joker always has a long line. If it's line is not even, I mean right now it's not even under these awnings, ride Joker. Joker is such a fun ride to ride. Um, and you know, if there's no line, then do not pass up this opportunity because it is very rare that Joker does not have a line. So let's do Joker, let's go. Also, something super fun about Joker, it does have a fun house element, which is just a little theming element mid-ride. The reason why uh, Poltergeist is down right now is so that they're adding a lot more theming to the key line. There's going to be a little bit more like the fun house that they have here. They're gonna start adding those to a couple of their rides, making the theming elements in the queue line a little bit better. Because waiting in just a whole bunch of switchbacks kind of sucks. But whenever you go into this cool element right here, it's pretty awesome. Please do not put them down. Okay? Please do not pull the restraints down. You guys ridden this ride before? No. Oh, then this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> There's the fun house. And there you go guys, we just waited about 10 minutes for Joker Carnival of Chaos, which is pretty much unheard of. Usually it has a very long line. You can see over here, line's starting to fill up. So, like I said, great strategy. Try to ride Roadrunner real quick, then come, or may, and maybe Iron Rattler, then come right back to the back of the park because no one will be over here. You can get on all of the rides before they get crazy long lines. 
All right, here we go. guys are looking for a good kids area if you brought the little ones to the park it's going to be right across from Superman this is Kidsopolis Kidsopolis has I believe seven kids rides that you guys can ride um, Jonathan uh, hello did they just send a whole bunch of people to area 3 today go off okay that's someone else who works in area 1 but he's in area 3 today so Okay, go up. Um, anyways, yeah, that is Kidsopolis. This ride over here has seven rides for the kids. Pretty cool stuff, but let's do Batman the Ride. Batman the Ride is a ride that either people really love or really don't like. So it's really just an up in the air type of thing. Anyways, let's go on in. Here we go. Ta-da. The line isn't too long, that should be about maybe 15 to 20 minutes from that point, but I'm still going to uh, go up the flash pass line just because I can. A lot of flash pass entrances are going to be the exits of rides, um, including here, Batman, it is up the exit. Might as well take this time to explain the flash pass system. If it's going to be a super crowded day, then you may want to get a flash pass. Flash passes come in three different levels. Bronze, where you get a watch. Well, everyone, you get a watch and you schedule times where you want to go up to a ride. With bronze, let's say I schedule Iron Rattler and Iron Rattler has a 60 minute wait. You schedule it, you wait 60 minutes doing whatever else you want. You can go wait in line and ride another ride, go get food, whatever. And then once that 60 minutes is up, you can go up the flash pass line of Iron Rattler. With gold, that wait is cut in half. So you schedule the ride and then you wait about 30 minutes doing whatever you want. And then you can go up the flash pass line. With platinum pass, you basically wait nothing. You can just schedule the ride and it's technically you only wait 10% of it but usually that ends up being what five minutes which is basically the time that it takes to just walk up the flash pass line. By the way this question gets asked a lot like what's the time limit after you after your reservation is ready what's the time limit on how long you have to go up to the ride. Um, I believe it's an hour. By the way, I wanted to wait in all of the lines today just to show you guys like, oh, they're not that long, they're chill. Um, but I only have a limited amount of time before I actually have to go into work. So I want to make my trip around the park as quick as possible. But still, Batman the Ride, that line right there was not that long. Like I said, maybe 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and I've seen this ride get up to 40, 45, minutes maybe even an hour so yeah and there you go batman the ride it is currently 11 37 um theoretically obviously if you actually waited in this line um it would probably be around 12 um, but in that case, you have just ridden four rides in an hour and a half. That's pretty awesome. Anyways, let's go over to Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is really going to be one of your longer waits. 
and here we go, Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster. It is the world's first single rail roller coaster. That line is going to be about 45 minutes. Um, that means that you will be done somewhere around one. Honestly, that's not too bad for Wonder Woman. There you go. <laughs> Nice. Now, if you have a membership and you need to use your flash pass, use it on Wonder Woman. 100% use it on Wonder Woman. That is going to be the best use of your flash pass is going to be on Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster, 100%. There you go. Just read for Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster. Now, of course, if if you were actually going throughout your day waiting in all of the lines, which I am not doing, but um, you would be done with this by about one o'clock, um, which is not bad at all. You just did really half of the rides, actually over half of the rides in about three hours. And here is Fiesta Bay Boardwalk. This section of the park doesn't actually open until 12. So it is a little bit until this part of the park opens which is why actually right now you would be able to go back there, um, but it's a little bit earlier for me since I was able to skip some of the lines. Um, but I'm going to write Scream real quick. This is not necessarily a must to do, um, but I kind of want to do it, so might as well. Let's go. There's Liza, and then right behind is Dez, and I don't know who the girl in front is, but that's okay. Liza used to be my supervisor. Dez right now is my lead. There she is. Um, yeah, and you can already see uh, Batman's line is really getting down there. So definitely a crowded day. We were able to skip a decent amount of that line. Whenever I came over, it was just about to this building, so about half as long, which is awesome. Anyways, here we go. Poltergeist is closed right now, um, but that's because they're doing some refurbishment. That is what these signs are for. They're going to redo the queue line. Um, and then they're also going to repaint the ride, stuff along those lines. As I was riding Scream, I looked over and they are power washing the track right now, which is pretty cool. Anyways, let's head on down over to Goliath. On our way down here, I wanted to highlight Stanger Fest. Stanger Fest is a nice little food court here. Uh, you can get some nice food options as they see outside here on the line there's different types of food they basically have any sort of food that you may be looking for they have it here um, i also believe that it is available for mobile food ordering i've talked about that in a couple of my other videos um, and it's pretty self-explanatory just download the app and click mobile food ordering and you can order food online one of the best things about this though is they have a refill station here. So if you have those souvenir drink cups, instead of waiting in a super long line with everyone else trying to get food at stands around the park, you should just come in here and there's pretty much no line for drinks ever. Um, so I'm going to grab a refill real quick. Uh, if you have a membership, you get all season drinks. You can also buy this cup. Um, it's I think like 25 or $30 and you get unlimited refills all season. Um, a day drink cup is about $20 if you only buy one, but if you buy multiple, then it basically decreases every time. So yeah, that's how it works. Definitely worth it if you're gonna be coming a couple days. Hey, what's up? Sure Yo, rides are closed. I so. know, you're stealing all of the area one. If Boomerang is closed on your visit, don't be sad it's not a very great ride the main rides what you really need to get on our iron rattler wonder woman superman and goliath i would say those are a solid top four if poltergeist was open then i would th add that to the list anyways let's go over to goliath and this will be the last ride of the day other than iron rattler that we need in order to have a full trip around the park at this point Assuming maybe you got some food at Pete Seats, Johnny Rockets, stuff like that. It's probably somewhere around 1.30 or 2 o'clock. And you are just about to finish your 100% trip around the park. After this, you have ridden every single ride in the park. 
or every single major ride in the park and now you can just start re-riding your favorites or maybe if you see something else you may like then go ride that here we go the lion in the morning this line will maybe even stretch out the entrance it's a very long line in the morning right now I just see one switch back. And here we are. After about a 10 minute wait here, we are walking up the steps. Once you're walking up the steps, it's probably about five minutes until you're on this ride. So not long at all. And really, it's the best way to avoid crowds. Come back to this ride later, it's gonna have much less of a line. And look at how filled full that parking lot is. Goliath is another pretty good first coaster if you're looking for one. If for some reason Superman is not your preferred pick, come over and ride Goliath. It's a very similar ride. This one goes a little bit faster through this lay layout, but it is a little bit shorter. Um, so it may look a little bit less intimidating if that's something that you're going for. Jenny! Jenny! Oh well, she's not hearing me. That's sad. Jenny! I said hi to her already. She actually noticed me. Hey! Oh, checking the gate, check the gate. Hey, there you go, go off, let's go. All right, <laughs> anyways, just got off of Goliath. Um, that is super fun ride to ride. Man, it is such a good ride. Um, after this, I'm going to go on over and ride Iron Rattler. Um, it should in, it shouldn't actually be too crowded. Usually it gets really crowded in the morning in the middle of the day It kind of has flare-ups and then it gets pretty dead um, So yeah, it, it's really a hit or miss with iron rattler if the line is too long in the middle of the day wait until nighttime once it gets to about seven o'clock people start to clear out of the park um, and rides like iron rattler will have pretty short waits, so definitely a nice tip. If you guys have a drink cup, you can also get a refill right over here near the front entrance. It is useful, especially as you're like walking out of the park. Um, by the way, just so that you guys know, every single restaurant here, um, any place that has fountain drinks, is also going to be able to give you guys free water. If you ask for water, they will give you guys a free cup of water. Um, so, yeah, that's always really nice. So you don't have to go and buy like $6 water bottles or whatever. I would say that these drink cups are super helpful and that you guys should get these. But if you don't, you just want some water, then you can walk up to any shop and they will give you a free cup of water. Jenny! Yo, what's good? Are you on break? Go off and back over into Crack Axle Canyon. By the way, if you're going to the water park, Whitewater Bay is right here. We're going to walk past Boomerang and it's going to be right on the right hand side here. Please know that if you are going into the water park, maybe you're going into the dry park first and then the water park after or vice versa. Please know that in order to ride any of the rides, you do need shoes, shorts, and sh uh, sh yeah, shoes, a bottom, and a top in order to ride any of the rides. Um, we have definitely kicked a lot of people off just because they don't have shirts, they don't have shoes, stuff like that. Um, it says it on a sign right here, and there is a security person that makes sure that everyone is following the dress code. Yeah. And this is why. We rode a Roadrunner first, especially because it has one train right now. The other train is out of service, so. And the last ride that you need to ride in the entire park 
Iron Rattler. From the looks of it right now, it seems to have a solid line. Nothing too crazy. Um, yeah, the switchbacks are not open, so this line is going to be about 45 minutes. Um, again, definitely helps if you just grab a flat fast real quick. Um, or that's too long for you, don't worry, you can just come back later in the day and towards the nighttime, it will have a lot shorter of a loop. Okay, operations. Rolling trains. Oh, hello? There it is. Hey. Let's go. Hey. Hey, let's go, operations. I see you. Okay. Hey yo, they are flying with these operations. I haven't seen them stack at all. I am I'm so proud. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's super awesome. Um, Iron Rattler, such a good ride. I mean, such a good ride. You know, even if the line may look long, the line moves really fast. Um, and this ride is so worth it. Um, I have ridden 181 different roller coasters. This ranks about number 11 out of those, which is absolutely insane. Um, so, yeah, definitely a must to do here at Fiesta Texas. That drop seems intimidating, yeah, sure. But once you get down it, the whole rest of the ride is one of the most graceful rides, honestly. It's, there's no more huge drops. There's no, you know, crazy whippy moments. You know, after you get down that first drop, you just hang out on the quarry wall and it's, it's just such a great ride. 100% must to do as you are here at Fiesta, Texas. And with that, you're about midway through your day here at Fiesta, Texas, and you've already done every single ride in the park. That's awesome. Um, you can do literally whatever else you want now. Let's say you loved that ride on Iron Rattler, you can go ride it again. Hey! Yo, yo, I'm literally coming in in like 20 minutes. Come this is Fiesta, Texas. Um, Subscribe and like to the channel. Go up, go up, go up. Turn on the notifications, right? Yeah, notifications. Let's go. Just grab some Primo's pizza here at Stanger Fest. It's a pepperoni slice and it comes with fries. If you do get the membership, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting the dining plan. It's about $6 a month and you get two meals and a snack every single time you visit, which is very good. Um, I mean, one meal will cost you about $14. Um, so dining plan pays for itself in a visit really every three months. Um, if you visit only four times a year, dining plan is still worth it. So anyways, let's see. Also, if it's raining like it is right now, Stengerfest is a nice place to shelter. Get some food and kind of chill out because it is pouring right now. So I'm trying to make it to my car, but this is going to be interesting. I've just accepted that I'm going to get wet. It's not raining too hard, so I think we're vibing. And there you go. That ends my day here at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. I would say if it does rain like this, stay in the park. Especially if it's not going to do this all day because a lot of people leave like I did, but that's because I have to go to work. Um, but a lot of people leave the park and then park is and ends up being completely dead um, also the rides do still operate in the rain um, at least a decent amount of them do unless it's crazy heavy rain let me turn on my car just so that I can have the windshield wipers to show you guys that Goliath still has people on it oh there it is anyways that's gonna conclude the day here at Six Flags Fiesta Texas that is how you get around the park waiting in as minimal lines as possible. After that, all of the lines are going to be about the same, so you can kind of just re-ride whatever you want. If you find a, a line that maybe is a little bit shorter, then definitely ride that. If you missed out on something, let's say you missed out on Iron Rattler um, or Wonder Woman, something like that, go back later in the day. Um, 
between the time of like seven o'clock until close, a lot of the rides will definitely have a lot shorter lines. And that's just because a lot of people head out somewhere, you know, in the middle of the day, especially on crowded days like this, they ride some rides and then they may get frustrated that there's long lines and then they leave. And when they leave, the lines get shorter. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to smash that thumbs up button. Go watch some of my other videos where I give other tips and tricks on how to kind of navigate your day here at Six Flags Fiesta Texas. A playlist of all of my Fiesta Texas videos is right up there in the corner. Um, and also, just don't forget to check out my park vlogs in general. I have a whole bunch coming out of a trip that I did that I'm calling Coast in the Midwest. Um, and I stopped at, I believe, four or five parks. So definitely go check that out. But anyways, I'll see you guys all next time. Peace out. And less than an hour later, it's super sunny. This is why you stay even if it rains, because it'll just turn right back into this.